Hello coaches, Coach Kyle here with a screencast on constraint-based training session design. Let's unpack what I mean by training session and constraints. So training sessions for this screencast, I mean short-term day-to-day session planning for athletes, not longer-term uh, training plan design that involves periodization and monitoring athlete uh, recovery, for example. By constraints, I mean the intentional manipulation of the task, the environment, or the athlete, also called the individual, to achieve specific learning outcomes. If we put both of those back together, constraint-based training sessions, what I want you to picture there are athlete-centered strategic uses of constraints. And then the coach is going to use those constraints as interventions to build strengthen and reinforce technical or non-technical skills and that build strengthen and reinforce those are three levels of constraints that i have uh, three additional videos um, to that come after this screencast all right so intentional use of constraints as short-term interventions to build strengthen or reinforce skills let's look at the task environment and athlete these are the three categories of constraints. So for the task, if a coach manipulates the type of equipment used, maybe the draw weight of the bow could even be the size, the length of the limbs, for example, that's manipulating the task. Target size, target distance, uh, the scoring format, using cat whiskers as a constraint, uh, or the connection ball that some of you have seen. Those are all changing the task and elements uh, or examples of uh, a constraint created by manipulating task. We can also create constraints by manipulating the individual or the athlete. Let's say we wanted an athlete to practice uh, shooting with a higher heart rate or even practice their, their breathing. We could have them do jumping jacks before shooting and then come to the line get their, uh, you know, maybe they did jumping jacks until their heart rate is 160, they come to the line and they practice their breathing to see how quickly they can uh, bring that heart rate back down. That would be an example of constraining the individual. Some individuals might come already constrained with reduced range of motion or they're tired from uh, the training day before. And next would be environment. So this is wind, club culture, media, rules, um, gender stereotypes, these are uh, elements of the environment that can impact the athlete in different ways. Okay, so how do constraints lead to coordination? That's an important piece we need to understand here. And that's where this model comes in handy. And it's important to understand that coach within constraints-based uh, session design the coach is a skillful problem setter and the athlete is the expert problem solver. So the coach will set up the constraints here on this triangle, the task, the athlete, and the environment, and then set the athlete to explore their, uh, excuse me, explore and discover new movement solutions for the goals that they're working on. Now that process is nonlinear. So that's uh, demonstrated by that squiggly line there. And so through that nonlinear and exploratory learning process emerges coordination or new skills. All right, so that is a brief overview of what I mean by constraint-based training session design. Remember that there are three levels. Level one is building skill, level two is refining skill, and level three is reinforcing skill. We have three more videos to cover each of these, and I recommend going and watching those in order.